Extra Minutes. He told me he accepted that his actions caused Ms Yeo's death, not because he attacked her with a knife, but because he should not have struggled with her over the knife when she produced it, and that he, quote unquote, should have handled the situation better. He also described his conduct on the 16th of July in going to Ms Yeo's home unit as, quote, inappropriate, close quote, and wrong, quote, unquote, and that it was, quote, inappropriate that he stay in the unit after she had invited him in, and they argued, and that it was finally inappropriate that he should leave over the balcony. In light of what I consider to be the offender's continuing lack of insight into or acceptance for the extreme and ultimately fatal violence he perpetrated upon Miss Yeo, it is very difficult to make any reasoned assessment into his prospects of rehabilitation, but I am quite unable to accept that they are good. In my view, they are at best described as guarded. That said, I accept that he is not an unintelligent man, and it may be that in time, a more realistic and sensible self-appraisal may surface. I accept that he has made some attempts in prison-based courses to confront the reality of his situation. I note Dr First's recommendation that the offender avail himself of the group and individual counselling offered by the Violent, of Violent Offenders Treatment Program in prison. I would expect, however, that acceptance into the program would require, as a bare minimum, the offender to acknowledge that he is a violent offender who requires treatment. Given the length of the non-parole period that I will impose as part of this sentencing order, I cannot meaningfully predict the risk of his reoffending on release. I now turn to consider the victim impact statements. I have received victim impact statements from Ms Yeo's mother, her father and her brother. I also accept that Ms Yeo's death and the circumstances in which she died have impacted upon them physically, psychologically and emotionally. I can only hope that at the culmination of these proceedings they are able in time to resume their lives as individuals and surviving members of a most loving family and with an untarnished memory of Ms Yeo as a loved daughter and sister. I sincerely hope that the circumstances in which she died will recede from their memory, although I accept they will never be erased entirely. No sentence of imprisonment, whatever its length, can compensate for the loss of a loved one or even begin to address the grief and sadness that accompanies the loss of life and the anger that the death of a young woman should occur at the hands of another. I do, however, take into account the statements of Ms Yeo's family in the way permitted to me by law. On behalf of the court and on my own personal behalf, I extend my deeper sympathies to her family and to the others who knew and loved her. Taking into account the purposes for which sentence is imposed, as reflected in Section 3A of the Crime Sentencing Procedure Act, and utilising the maximum sentence and the standard non-parole period as legislative guideposts, I impose the following sentence. Would you stand up, please? Paul Darren Mulverhill, on the charge of murder, I sentence you to a term of imprisonment of 29 years, comprised of a non-parole period of 22 years, commencing on 16 February 2013 to account for your pre-sentence custody and expiring on 15 February 2035, with a balance of term of seven years, expiring on 15 February 2042. You will be first eligible for release to parole on 15 February 2035. Sit down, please. Ms Crown, anything? Mr Kavanagh? 
Um, uh, may I s simply acknowledge the um, ongoing cooperation of the press, and I will adjourn. Well, sir.